Oh, I really don't want to do this. I just really don't want to make this video, but I feel like I should because it's one of those things where if I don't stand up for what I believe in, then what's the point of this YouTube channel? Hey guys, my name is Nazar Sayed. I'm a writer and reader from Toronto, Ontario. And today I want to talk about Sally Rooney and a conversation with friends with you guys. Sally Rooney is a book talk sensation. Every single thing she writes is on that app, deemed as this phenomena that you have to be a part of or else you're missing out and you're not a real reader. That's the vibe that I get with book talk when it comes to um, overhyping and sensationalizing specific properties. Sally Rooney is no different. I read a conversation with friends over a two month period because I just could not, for the life of me, finish this book. And this pains me to say this because I understand that a lot of people love Sally Rooney and a lot of people connect with this book, but I just couldn't get through it. The problem started quite early for me when we started developing these characters as quite unlikable right from the get-go. The main protagonist, Francis, is supposed to be this really super smart artistic person, but throughout the novel, all she does is make horrible decisions. And not once in this novel does she come across as smart or articulate or even wise. The decisions she makes are abhorrent. Like if you have a friend like this, you definitely sit them down and you have a conversation with them, as the title says. And there's definitely an intervention happening when something like this is happening. But that never occurs in this book. The people that Frances has surrounded herself with are, if not more than, than equally unlikable. The four main characters, Frances, who's the narrator, Bobby, her best friend slash ex, Nick, the love affair that she has, and Melissa, who is Nick's wife, all four of them are so problematic and so unlikable that it just, every time they're on the page, which is often because this is a one person, this is a first person narrative, it's just annoying. And I don't mean deep, complex problematic, where there's nuance and there's understanding and there's context behind their toxicity, it's just the problems just wash over you at some point. There's just like an unlikable irreverence towards each other in this book. My philosophy is that one should not remain best friends with their ex after that relationship has ended. Move on, do your thing, don't keep them in your life. That's just a personal thing that I have. Seeing the relationship that Francis and Bobby have reminded me of why that philosophy holds true. Bobby is a jerk to her a lot. And secondly, try not to have an affair with a man who's been in a marriage. And no, no, this is not an excuse to say that, oh, Melissa, Nick's wife had affairs before, so that's why it's okay for, no, 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 it's never okay. The relationship that Nick and Francis had was just so unlikable. And this is coming from a fan who's a fan of Game of Thrones, where there is incest going on and somehow we can ship that more than we can ship this. The writing was mild-mannered, which is fine for a novel like this. My only problem is that I sincerely believe Sally Rooney thought she was writing the next Pride and Prejudice. And you can tell by the deep, inward-thinking monologues that Francis just dives into randomly. And this is kind of the problem I have with book talk. It's really hit or miss for me right now. The hype is so strong that you cannot resist but check these books out. But the payoff is not always there. The book that really did it for me was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I think that was a great example of hype meets quality meets timeless work. And I don't really think we got it with this one. This one, unfortunately, was a drag. The characters were unlikable, the plot was thin, and the execution was just okay. Somebody on TikTok said that I was not the target demographic for this book, and I can see that, but that doesn't mean that I can't enjoy it. If it's good writing, it's good writing across the board. It doesn't have to be target demographic. Harry Potter was not the target demographic for people over the age of 12, and yet it became the sensation. So there's something about a widespread acclaim that doesn't necessarily mean that the non-target demographic can enjoy a piece of work. Your writing should be just as good for not targeted demographics than for targeted demographics. Like your audience is gonna be your audience regardless, but the real writers, the real artists, find a way to capture the naysayers. Sally Rooney did not capture me. 
Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this mini rant. I really didn't want to make this video because I don't really want the negativity to circulate in my channel, but I felt very strongly about this book because I did give a lot of time to this novel and it didn't really pay off. So I really wanted to say my piece with it. If you agreed or disagreed with my analysis, please let me know. Let's have an adult conversation in the comment section below. Let's find a way to make this make sense. And I love to be proven wrong. So if you think that there's another title that Sally Rooney wrote that I can check out, that would maybe sway me. Maybe I could become a fan. I would love to check it out. Leave the recommendations down below. And if you want to check out what else I'm doing, the descriptions are down below. I have a newsletter. I have a podcast. I do a lot of cool things on Instagram as well. If you'd like to check me out, links are down below. My name was Nazar Sayed. My name is Nazar Sayed. See you in the next video. Doing a lot of this stuff today. I don't know why. <laughs>